<laughs> I don't know. We haven't even started the show yet. Uh, good afternoon, Facebook. Good morning, Facebook. No matter where you are, we are live. And uh, this is myself with Angelica. Guten Tag, Angelica. <laughs> Hello, Stephen. Wie geht's? Mir geht's gut. Und dir? Mir auch. Uh, so welcome, welcome to the show, everybody. And uh, we have a topic this week because it's Wimbledon week. And the topic is tennis. Tennis. Yes. Okay. Purely because Stephen has been watching tennis all week. Uh, I haven't. I'm not interested in tennis, I have to admit. But just because I'm not interested in tennis doesn't mean anybody else isn't interested in tennis. And I'm sure there are lots of people who are learning German who are also interested in tennis. They may even feel guilty for having watched tennis so much and not having done any German. So we're going to rectify this now. We certainly so, are. Certainly are. I mean, both... Yeah. Both Brits are out of the competition, but uh, that doesn't mean that tennis doesn't have a use, especially. Now, can you talk a bit about the site that you've been using? I found a website uh, which actually uh, gives explanations about tennis uh, in German and in reasonably easy German. When I say reasonably easy German, uh, it's obviously aimed at Germans. Um, the text is easier than Wikipedia. I had a look at Wikipedia on the German side for tennis, and uh, that was all very technical stuff. So this this site um, explains it reasonably easy. Even I understood the stuff ah. that they were writing about. And uh, but they, so they they give general explanations. Obviously, that has got nothing to do with Wimbledon. But they also do cover Wimbledon and um, they have um, extra pages where they say uh, which games are on when and where can you watch them and things like this. Right. OK. Now, this is the bit where I try to pronounce it, the German phrase and then translate it. So I've got eight phrases this week. And the first phrase uh, that I've got is this one. And it is. Phrase one, tennis regeln for Enfänger einfach erklärt. Tennis regeln, that was pretty good. Tennis regeln for Anfänger einfach erklärt. And that was the headline of one article. Okay, what does it I'm going to try and break this down. Tennis is the same in both languages, yes? Yeah, it is. Uh, erklärt is. Clear? Made clear? Well, made clear or explained, yes. Okay. And Anfänger is what I am, which is <laughs> a beginner. So, uh, and Regal, um rules. Okay, I'm yeah. going to go for this. I, I'm trying my best here. So, tennis rules for beginners. And simply explained. Yes, or made so clear. that's that's what appealed to me because I was looking at these tennis rules, and um, actually, I understand a little bit more about tennis now, which I never have before because I read um, these uh, the, the pages. Right. So we'll we'll find out a little bit. Obviously, I haven't copied everything from there. There's far too much to read, but I picked a few things. Okay, uh, so second sentence. Again, I should read it out. Im Tennis gibt es ein Einzel, das Doppel und das Mixed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, well I'm done. going to take a, we, we take a flight at this because tennis is tennis. <laughs> so in tennis, uh, there are, and Doppel is doubles, Mixed is mixed. So I'm going to say Einzel is singles. So exactly. uh, singles, doubles, and mixed. Even I work that one out. It, so it, if you know a little bit about tennis, you can work that one out quite easily, can't you? In, indeed, yeah. So there's the original German and the translation into English. <coughs> okay, now sentence three, a bit more complicated, uh, but I'll try and read it. Beim Tennis gewinnt man, wenn man mehr Sätze als der Gegner gewinnt. 
Yeah. Oh. Well, you've got lots, lots of double words there, haven't you? Beim Tennis gewinnt man, wenn man mehr Sätze als der Gegner gewinnt. So. Uh, right there. In, in tennis, you win when Zetzer. Uh, was bedeutet Zetzer? Well, this is a this is a funny word because um, uh, you'll probably come across this one in a textbook fairly early on when you get instructions like lesen Sie die Sätze, because Sätze well, in your German textbook would mean sentences. But of course, in this case here, uh, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. You win in tennis when you win what? When you win, win the match. Win yeah, more. But... When you out, outscore your opponent and say good afternoon to Stephen. It's Wimbledon this week, Stephen. So we are talking about tennis and we're looking at tennis phrases. Mm -hmm. It's sets. Okay. Tennis okay. sets. Sets here is sets and not sentences. Sets. So in go. tennis. You win when you win more sets than yeah. your opponent. Exactly. Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, now, the next phrase, match Zatz und Spiel. Zatz, we've just said, is sets. And uh, we've heard it many a time this week. Uh, so I'm going to go for game, set, and match. Yeah. So Zatz is singular, which is the set, Zetze was the sets, but exactly, game, set, and uh, match, set, and game. Uh, yeah, the, the, this, this is where we have um, a colloquial use and a literal use, because at Wimbledon this week, they would have been saying game, set, and match. Yes, because the, the, the reason the game for that... Okay. Yeah, go on, you tell me why they would say game, set, and match. Well, the game has just ended. They've just won that one game. Mm -hmm. They have won that set, and that set gives them the match. Yeah, the reason why they've got that, uh, that, that again was a headline of the explanation. The match is the overall one, but in order to win the match, you have to win the sets, and in order to win the sets, you have to win the game. And that's what all the games, and uh, that's why they've got it the other way around. Okay. Yeah, it's so, not. It yeah. wasn't the term they use at Wimbledon. It was the term they used to to explain how the games go. Right. All oh, right. Okay. So yes. Right. So I think I've got that. So it's not a real <laughs> world thing. It's it's a theoretical thing. It it was the explanation. Yes, I didn't see that shows that I don't watch any tennis because I didn't even click that they had it. The the it's not the wrong way round. It's the way they were explaining it. It was the right way round but it wouldn't have been the term they used uh, in a game that has been won. Like we've, got, we've got that. So match, zatz and spiel is uh, match, set and game or, or game, set and match. <laughs> right. And phrase five. Uh, um, ein match zu gewinnen muss man set, set zu gewinnen. Okay. So now, now, now you know why they started with match first, match, satz und spiel, because they're now saying, um ein match zu gewinnen, muss man sätze gewinnen. To win a match, you must win sets. Exactly. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, that that's logical. Um, I don't have a problem with that one, uh, because... It's just logical, and you can't. Well, and you understand. You know tennis. You're watching tennis anyway. So, uh, uh, I mean, I, I wouldn't possibly recommend reading explanations about tennis in German if you are learning German and you don't know anything about tennis. Right. I okay. Have a so slight that... advantage, at least I, I knew German, but I still don't know anything about tennis. Whereas if you know things about tennis, then all these sentences will make a lot more sense to you than they do to me. Right. Okay. So the sentence was, mein match zu gewinnen muss man setze gewinnen. And the translation is to win a match, you have to win sets. 
Yeah. Okay. Fred six. Uh, I see we're going the other way around here because Fred six is um einen Satz zu gewinnen muss man Aufschlag spieler gewinnen. Exactly. Uh, so we started with the big thing, the match, yeah. then the set, and now what happens to win a set? Um einen Satz zu gewinnen muss man now the Aufschlag is in brackets because Tennis people would know what they're talking about, so they probably would only say, muss man Spiele gewinnen, mm -hmm. yeah, but, um, to make absolutely sure what type of uh, Spiele we're talking about, we're saying Aufschlagspiele. Right, so they... okay. Uh, so to win a set, you must win more games. Mm -hmm. uh, and you, the translation you've got is serve. Again, most of the times in English as well, we just talk about games. And a comment from Stephen, uh, Angelica, you're not missing much, not understanding tennis. <laughs> Stephen, I tried to explain That's cricket. Right, the <laughs> I tried to explain cricket. We got lost in that. Although the one, one we do both understand is football, especially when England <laughs> play Germany. And... <laughs> I have to say about cricket, I was once told by somebody, foreigners don't need to understand it. And I'm very happy with that sentence because cricket is way beyond me. Um, tennis, well, cricket I'm also not interested in, but I'm not really interested in tennis either. So, uh, but I do realise a lot of people are. Indeed they are. Indeed they are. And all the people at Wimbledon, I hope you have a fine day. And... Uh, May Federer win. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> so that's, I mean, Miss Federer would speak German, wouldn't he? Being Swiss. I would have thought so, yes. You yeah. only ever hear them speak English, though, because their English is so good, isn't it? <laughs> True. Okay, now the next sentence is you put into test me, and I'm going to try my best. Uh, es werden 250. Ballmädchen und Balljungs, die CA, die CA, I don't know that, uh, 54.000 Baller organisieren. Yeah, that's now still from the same website, but that was from the page about Wimbledon and about Wimbledon 2017. And um, although I have to say I shortened this a little bit, it was a lot longer, you wouldn't be able to read it on the screen. Ja. Um, so es werden 250 Ballmädchen und Balljungen, uh, Balljungs, if you, sorry, uh, die, now the CA, that's short for circa, die circa 54.000 ah. Bälle organisieren. So if I guessed it, I would have got it right, because CA does stand for circa. Right, okay, it's the same word. Okay. Right, okay, let's try and translate this then. Uh, 250 is 250. Uh, it's written down there. <laughs> and, shush! They're not supposed to know that. I'm supposed to be translating this as we go. We're not, this is not going all well. <laughs> well, oh, 250 dear. is still written as 250, just as it is in German as well. Okay. There are 250 uh, ball girls and boys and uh, who deal with around uh, or organise 54,000 balls. And uh, there's the translation for you, just to confirm. Yeah. But I was trying my best, you see, to make this convincing because I'm, not, <laughs> I'm supposed to be translating it. Well, you are, was but that? when it says 250, I mean, I could have spelled it out. I could have actually written 250, um, but then 54,000, it would have given you even less space to write the sentence down. Well, the sentence would have been that big. It had been so big, it wouldn't have fit. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> right, okay. Well, if 54,000 wasn't enough, we come on to uh, question eight. <sighs> the 930,000 de shower werden wieder circa, that's something we've learned today, mm -hmm. 29 flaschen champagne und unser zahliger Erdbeeren. For put. 
Now, I've I'm got... wondering, did your screen run out of letters there and didn't put the last three in there? Because we're missing three letters. It should have been I... Verputzen. But we're, I think we've broken it. I think we it's can possible. only... We've broken it. So for puts and <laughs> then. Okay. Yes. Let's take that as red. Um, okay. So are you going to read it for us? Connecting my, correcting me? Well, yes, because um, although you said the first number right, the 39,000 Zuschauer werden wieder circa, and then you just put down 29. It's actually 29,000 Flaschen Champagner und unzählige Erdbeeren verputzen. Precision is everything. I think 29 <laughs> bottles of champagne for 39,000 people is not well, enough. Well, it, it could have been. So uh, 39,000 uh, spectators, mm -hmm. okay, watchers, uh, will drink around 29,000 bottles of champagne and countless for put and for put. <laughs> This is not no, going it well. Fe it doesn't fit. No, for it was. And for yeah, Putzen, and, uh, what, what we can tell well, everybody what for Putzen are. <laughs> for Putzen means to polish off. To polish Actually, off. Actually, you've you've got the word Putzen in there, which is to clean. Now, fair Putzen, obviously, they're not cleaning the strawberries, but they're polishing them off and the bottles of champagne. Well, we got to the bottom of that one. <laughs> Oh, and I just realized the English text hasn't got it all either. So we no, no, we're breaking the machine. Okay. We're going to have to choose shorter sentences in two weeks' time. We'll have to make sure nobody drinks 29,000 bottles of champagne then. Well, it won't be you and me. <laughs> no, definitely not. And Wimbledon will be finished as well by then. Indeed. Uh, so there you are. And... Uh, Thank you, Stephen. I am the guinea pig and I am learning. Well, I have given a speech in German, it has to be said, um, the other week. Uh, so I try my best. I get it right. Well, it's up to my lehr meine Lehrerin. Oh, it's my I, fault now, is it? <laughs> no, no, I'm asking for your opinion, but we, we don't. It, <laughs> this week, Angelica has been talking with help from me about tennis as it's Wimbledon week. And we've looked at, just to run through them again. Uh, do you want to read them out properly? And I'll tennis do the English. Regeln, okay, tennis regeln für Anfänger einfach erklärt. Which is tennis rules for beginners simply explained. Phrase number two was. Im Tennis gibt es das Einzel, das Doppel und das Mixed. And I translated that correctly because it was easy to guess. In Tennis there are singles, doubles and mixed matches. Phrase number three. Beim Tennis gewinnt man, wenn man mehr Sätze als der Gegner gewinnt. Okay, and the answer, the translation of that was in Tennis you win when you win more sets than your opponent. Then we had a discussion about this one. Yes, about match, Satz und Spiel. Although at, then at the games, they're probably what they spiel, Satz und Match. Indeed, because game set and match <laughs> would be the, the way it's used at Wimbledon this week. Uh, so match set and game, literal translation, game set and match, idiomatic translation, possibly. Well, no, the, the literal translation goes with the explanation in the article, not the ah, game. Okay. That's the difference. Right. Now, we've posted a link to the website uh, in the chat if you want to take a look at that afterwards. Phrase five. Um ein match zu gewinnen, muss man Sätze gewinnen. Uh, to win a match, you have to win sets. Phrase six. Um einen Satz zu gewinnen, muss man Aufschlagspiele gewinnen. Which translates as, to win a set, you have to to win games and you've got to win 6-4 or 7-5 or by two clear games. We know that. Uh, number seven. Es werden 250 Ballmädchen und Balljungs, die circa 54.000 Bälle organisieren. 
there will be 250 ball girls and ball boys who organize about 54,000 balls. And our final phrase, which Angelica's got to get right because I got it wrong. Die 39.000 Zuschauer werden weder ca. 29.000 Flaschen Champagner und unzählige Erdbeeren verputzen. And the uh, translation of that is the 39,000 spectators will again polish off approximately 29,000 29, bottles of champagne and countless strawberries. Which, apologies for the text being shortened there. And uh, yes. Hmm. All right. Okay. I, I take your point there. Um, Angelica does have the decided advantage, Stephen, of being German. We have to remember that. So. <laughs> We're Brits trying to say, speak in German, and Gaika is a German who has perfect English, but also perfect German. So, with that said, Stephen, thank you for joining us. And yes, would you like to you. sign out for this week? Well, that's it for this week then. I'll have to think of a new topic for in two weeks' time. Is anything going on? Oh, I don't know. We'll find out. Um, until then, it's tschüss von mir. Und tschüss von mir. Bis später. Uh, gutes week, gutes Wochenende, alles. Was that okay? Schönes Wochenende. Schönes Wochenende, alles. Auf Wiedersehen. Bye. <laughs>